we'll start with the, the topic, which is uh, the Raml spec definition, which yesterday uh, we were talking about. So let us go through the, this uh, diagram once again and recall things uh, where we had left. So I said um, before doing any in basic implementation in uh, MuleSoft, we design an API spec in API designer and then the, do the simulation, we get the feedback and validate and we get the RAML. So this life cycle, you will uh, understand like why we are doing it and what is the uh, advantages of doing it. So as I said yesterday that if we get um, uh, a project where you want to fetch them data uh, of employees uh, from different table while connecting to database and you want to connect to Salesforce to get some other details. And then you have to transform that data and provide an output. So if you're going to implement that actual uh, implementation, so it will definitely wanna take time, right? Uh, you'll have to get that um, credentials for the test environment and dev environment where they are setting up the data. Then you have to make a connection. So it's gonna take some time. So to be flexible on the time, uh, time thing, we just mock the data. So in this case, what we are trying to do is we are designing it, but we are not uh, connecting to the real time data. We will have a requirement from the client that uh, the data uh, from the employee table will look uh, like in this way and they will provide a, us an example. And we can use as an example data. So this behaves like uh, you're just uh, querying it and getting the example data as input and showing the output. So if they see any issues in the output, they can just give us the feedback that uh, this output doesn't look good. You need to change this table name. You need to transform this. Uh, you want to can concatenate these things together and all this kind of stuff. So this is how it, uh, it comes in handy. And within one or two days, you just uh, define your API spec and you get the feedback. So this is why we are doing it. So when I started actually uh, implementing my project, so I had this question that why we have to do this process, why we have to go through this process. But later in time, uh, it, we realized, yeah, this is an important step to take. So now we are in, like implementing in every project which we design. Even if it's a small project, we use this habit of designing it and then implementing the basic uh, project. So I'll quickly go to the chart once uh, if it is not clear. So uh, when you say yeah. when you say marking, mm -hmm. you, you said it's a sample data, right? right. To get right. the feedback. Right. So is it also possible, suppose, uh, suppose you take a Salesforce system, they have a development system or yeah. uh, Process, yes, yeah. yeah. So we can also connect uh, to those system and get the data and then uh, send it to the user and see whether this looks okay or uh, you have to populate the data in some way for them to see whether it is okay or not. So Yeah, so the idea of mocking is uh, uh, we don't want to connect to any external systems. That is what oh. uh, where we want to save time. This is just a design. So in a design phase, we don't connect to any external systems. Okay, so, so during the design stage, suppose you, you have some uh, sample data, right? Yeah. But after uh, going into production or after going into the next stage, suppose mm -hmm. if you don't get the data from the database. Okay. For example, you have some uh, customer is asking some reference column to be displayed on the re response, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you don't know, you, but you can populate that reference column while you are designing. Mm -hmm. But when you go to actually connect to the database, you may not find that reference column in the yeah. underlying uh, base tables, right? So in that case, uh, how will we manage? So in that case, we'll have to come back to the um, uh, RAML and mm -hmm. remove that uh, reference column. And again, uh, we have to uh, just uh, update it. It's just updating the version. And it's, a, it's a, because it's a uh, issue from the database side, right? So anyways, we have to alter our code. So we'll okay. start from the RAML based and then we have to move to implementation and remove that uh, 
table or wherever it is in the implementation. Okay. So okay. It is. Uh, it works like in that way only. We don't have anything else to uh, take care of it, right? Okay. Okay. So I'll just give you a small example at how the flow works. So this is the API spec RAML, which we will design first. Then this is in uh, any point uh, platform. We are not uh, designing it in any point studio. So just any point platform. I'm just giving a short form for any point platform. So any point platform means the website that website. you show Exactly, okay. exactly, okay. the website. This is the website. Oh, so this okay. is the any point platform. Yeah, like in many people will get confused uh, that what is any point platform and what is a studio. So, to manage our API, to design our API, to get the things from Exchange, we use this AnyPoint platform. Even people will uh, design the whole code in Design Center, but uh, that is not advisable because AnyPoint Studio does that in a like in a more efficient and a good way. So for designing and implementing, we use the AnyPoint Studio, which is this IDE. Okay. Okay. And suppose in, I guess have one question. Suppose yeah. if we are developing a complex API where mm -hmm. it has a lot of microservices, right? Okay. So in that case, if you are doing that in, uh, I will be doing some part of that API. For example, mm -hmm. some fetching some information, and some some other guy will be doing other part of the API, right? So yeah. each one of us will be doing in our own individual PC then how that will be connected as a whole when it comes to the complete API. Okay. So suppose uh, you are calling a database system. So you will design your own API in, in here. Okay. So once that is connected and you have a requirement that this uh, API or microservice is uh, connecting to the Salesforce system as well, which is which your friend is designing. Okay. That is the requirement, right? Yeah. So what we do is, this is a lis listener, right? So we are listening to some uh, call. So after our output of our database output, we will have to connect to the Salesforce system, uh, which the other guy is designing. So we will make a call to them. Uh, that is called the HTTP and you have a request here. So okay. we will just make a call to his system. So oh, whenever okay. we are trying to talk to an external system, we have to use a request or there are some other things also which, which it can use, but uh, generally we prefer the SOAP HTTP, uh, sorry, the HTTP request part. You can connect with SOAP also, but uh, it's, this is a better way to connect, but some systems will have uh, SOAP connectivity, the legacy systems. So in that way, we have to connect through a SOAP call. Okay, so this request will be uh, connecting to the other guys. The others API, yes, yes. Okay, where he will also have the listener. Listener, yeah. He will be Holy. listening to something and then uh, the transformations can take place. So we decide what data we want to send it to him in a request. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah. So if 10 people are working, each one is working on their own uh, individual pieces. So this is how we need to Exactly, connect. exactly. That's how we get a project that uh, you will be designing the employee part, you will be designing the user data part, you will be designing the Salesforce part, and then we can just implement and uh, connect all the APIs together. So, but uh, when the final product is produced, like when it goes to production, and you will deploy everything onto any point platform, right? Yeah, yeah. So where you don't need to have these requests that you created during your design or testing phase, right? We will have to include this request. Without this, it can't uh, like it can't communicate the external services, right? Because this API which you will be designing, suppose it's a complex API of ten or fifteen uh, processes. It as I told you, it's a single code, right? Single code, and it will be deployed in a single worker. So okay. the other API won't be um, deployed here. So we have to connect through a request only over the internet. It uh, sounds like uh, right now it doesn't sound uh, uh, like convincing, but uh, when we do it in a better way, then you'll understand that how exactly it is working and how, what are the benefits to it. 
Okay, but when you deploy it onto the AnyPoint platform, mm -hmm. then the local reference will be removed, right? See, suppose uh, I've, I've completed my uh, development, right? Mm -hmm. And other guy is also completed his development. Right. Eventually, it is going to be considered as a single API, right? Okay. So two people have developed. So the, the whole no, no, API no. is going to be... One thing I'll need uh, to just uh, correct it, that it, it won't be a single API. Whenever you're designing one code, that is same one API. So I'll just show you, this is a hello world, right? So this yeah. alone is one API. This has all these oh, parts and that's okay. how it becomes an API. So you can't just touch other code in in this API, right? If oh, you want to okay. add them, you have to add different flows. So this is one flow, you'll add a different flow. So as I was talking about the layers, uh, if you remember, uh, process layer, uh, system layer, system and layer. experience layer. So the idea is uh, if you are developing a piece of code uh, where you are connecting database and Salesforce, so that should reside in a system layer only. You don't have oh, to create okay. a database layer API and a system layer API. You okay. can just connect it. Uh, suppose a, a code is already there for Salesforce. As we spoke about reusability, that someone has already uh, developed an API which fetches uh, employee data or uh, sales data from Salesforce. So in that case, we don't have to develop that API. We just have to request the data what we require from that API. So we'll just do a request call from uh, for that API and we'll get the data. Okay, so okay. that's how visibility comes. Okay, so each of them are uh, going to work as uh, microservices. When it exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. So, so as I was saying that uh, this is uh, hosted on any point platform and this is an API spec RAML. So once this is completed, what we do is we scaffold it and bring it to let's me sorry, yes. bring it to any point studio this piece of code so you will understand what i mean when we are scaffolding it to any point studio uh, in the coming lectures you will get to know that what we are actually doing and how it will help us in the any point studio because as of now you can see that we can easily create uh, the listeners and payload and request everything here, then why we need to import that API spec in our AnyPoint Studio. So that we will be uh, checking out in the coming lectures. But right now uh, we can uh, continue designing our uh, API spec RAML. Okay, so uh, let me go to the module. So we'll start with what uh, the uh, Ramble RESTful API modeling languages. So it's a language uh, uh, which is based on YAML. If you have heard of YAML and something like that, it's, it's similar to that, which has a parent-child relationship. So when I say the parent-child relationship, it is between the resources and methods. So when we were discussing about uh, uh, a website about Make My Trip, we saw that it has different resources, which I was talking to like uh, flight resources, hotel resources, and different resources. So this is what we are defining here as in resource section. And these are the HTTP methods, the get method. If you want to fetch something from that flight, uh, flight details, then it was using the get method inside it. And if you want to add a new flight, uh, you want to add some new flight to it, then we use the post method. Also, uh, we were checking out flights based on the ID. Like we wanted, we didn't want it to get all the flight details. So in that case, we were passing the ID thing, right? In a URI parameter. So this also comes here and it will again have its uh, get feature and get method and delete method and put method. So this is how uh, RESTful um, API modeling RAML, uh, RAML will look like. So again, as we discussed that uh, resources, these are the resources uh, by the web service URL that you want to act upon using the HTTP method. So any RAML which you are, de are designing uh, will have to have a resource and that methods. So all resources begin with a slash. So this is an um, indentation 
where you have to use that slash before the resources and then it, it will identify that it is a resource. And any method and parameters nested under resource belong to and act upon that source. So what does it mean? It means that if we have defined a resource called get or post under the flights, so it will work under this resource only. It won't work in a different resource. So if you have defined a get and you want to fetch for some other resource, so it will not work. So this is an important thing to keep in, in mind. And then we have nested resources. So nested resources are used for a subset of a resource to narrow it. So this example justifies this uh, line that this is a resource which is returning 10 to 12 flights or more than that. And if you want to get a single flight out of it based on the ID or anything, so we use a nested resource. So if you carefully observe, there's a line uh, starting here and the ID is in, in this place, just a tab space next to flights. So it is very much important to indentate your RAML. So without indentation, you will get an error. And RAML is only based on the indentation, how you provide the indentation. Then only how it understands that what it is needs to do. So we have to be careful about the indentation and uh, uh, it's sensitive uh, like to CAPSA. So we have to see that it's case sensitive and have to use the proper get and delete methods and everything. So we have to manually indentate uh, these uh, resource and child resources? Yes, yes. We have to manually do it. But uh, when we start doing it, uh, it, it sounds uh, like, you know, like it's a bit difficult to see, but uh, once you design one or two uh, resources on your own, uh, it will be very easier. And the thing is, it is reusable. So if someone uh, is um, already designed few resources in your project, then for other people, it will be just like spending one hour time and you can able to design it because it is like the same thing again and again, you will not be doing a coding kind of thing where you will have to implement a new logic it's just a set of instructions which you are providing. So, okay. so it's, it gives us more readability at the same yes. time. That's how it works. Exactly. Suppose if I want to add a new resource mm -hmm. later, it will be easy for me. Okay, this is the root resource and this is the child of it. So where I should be adding the new. Right? Exactly, exactly. That is a very good point which you have put. So that is how it uh, uh, helps us to, uh, to redesign it and add new features without even like, uh, like suppose you have worked on some project and uh, you have left that and some new person comes. So it will be helpful for them also to add this new resources. So now coming to the API designer where we will be designing our uh, Ramble. So I'll just give a... Uh, quick intro about how it looks and uh, so this is fine for you or should I go on a full screen mode? Yeah. Okay. So this is how an API designer will look like. So it is again present in uh, any point platform. So in the left side, you will see a file browser. Why we use this file browser? Uh, will come when we see the editor section. So this is the editor section and this is the place where you'll be writing the RAML. Uh, spec for your project. So it starts with uh, RAML 1.2, which is the version right now. Then you it will have a title of your um, American Flights API, any which one you're designing. So it's an American Flights. So that's why. Then we are using types. We'll speak this uh, in the later classes. Uh, like today we can cover this thing also. Then we have traits, responses, everything in here. So this is the editor and this is a shelf which will help you to, uh, I mean, it gives suggestions that uh, if you have made a resource, then the next thing is you will have to have a uh, method. So this provides uh, uh, suggestions to us and it is helpful. You don't have to actually write, you just have to click and it will come without that uh, indentation. And in the right side, you will get an API console. So consoles helps us to summarize what we have written and uh, how it will look at an API endpoint standpoint of view. So if you see, we will not be able to understand much from this code, but when we see this endpoints, 
we will be pretty sure that uh, it has a flight resource and we are, where we are getting that resource, uh, we have a get method and we have a post method in flights resource. And it has a, a, another uh, nested resource, which is flights uh, and ID, which shows three methods. So it gets quite clear from this API endpoint uh, and API console. Coming to the file browser, why we use it? Just for the usability purpose. So if you have already um, made some codes uh, already in um, your project and that is uh, posted to Exchange, so here uh, you can just get it from Exchange and use it in your code. You don't have to write that code again or even you can just add a example file. Suppose in some cases we get that example files uh, from our uh, BTS, like this is uh, an analyst or someone that this is our requirement. This is how our input should look like and this is how our output should look like. So in that case, we will just use that example files and we will just import it and store it and refer it in our editor. So, we will in case if we yeah. have to insert something so see in this screen we have some code right traits and mm -hmm. uh, we have so if you want to insert something in between for example some example file or something mm -hmm. is it possible or uh, it will mess up the indentation yeah, yeah. so that's what uh, we have to be careful about the indentation if you know the right place where you want to uh, indentate and uh, insert that example file so it won't be a problem but uh, if you don't know then it's 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 uh, give, gonna give you a hard time for that but uh, my suggestion is don't uh, worry too much about this api spec because if you go to any project they will already have defined all the things and you just have to copy their code and just use it in your sense so most of the things will be already present because it's a one time thing right and you just have to use the same things and reuse it so generally developers will not uh, focus much on the api spec instead they will develop uh, focus on the any point studio part so this is just a 20 percent and 50 to 20 percent of a developer's work okay main thing is the implementation like because giving example input and giving the output example it's very easy right that i want the input in this side and i want output as this side but to get that transformed the data that is where you have to uh, show your skills in implementation so we'll go to the our first walkthrough uh, which is the hands-on so we will use api designer to define an API with RAML. So our objective will be to create an API definition with RAML using API designer. So we will define resources and nested resources. We will define get and post methods, and we will add a query parameter also to that. So let's do that in any point design center. So uh, we are in the any point platform here. Just yeah. So once you are here, you just have to click the design center as we are designing the API spec. Then you have to come here and as I was showing, you have to create a new button and then you'll have different options, a new API spec, new fragment, new mule app, new async API. So in our case, we have to define an API spec. So define how the API will behave and how it communicates with other systems in API. So this is what we will be creating. So as soon as you click here, it asks you an API title, that what is the title of your project? So our clients, uh, we will give it as an American Flights API. And just give it to one. So this, uh, so it, there's no limitation that you can do it through RAML only. There are a few people who will uh, use their code uh, to implement this, but uh, it, it is like more uh, of a slower and uh, older kind of uh, way to define a RAML spec, but very few number of people who are not familiar with RAML, they're still doing with the code logic. So you have other uh, things also where you can define in other way. 
but uh, i think raml is uh, best suited in any point platform so most of the people uh, use raml only there's a swagger also but i haven't used it any time i didn't get a chance to use it so yeah there is options to use a different language if someone is not comfortable with raml so we will just uh, create an api spec it will take a few seconds to load and to fetch all the tips. So uh, what currently it's doing is it's uh, getting the uh, exchange properties for us. So if we see, it took three, two to three seconds for us to get to this window. So it was doing an API call again to the exchange and getting us the details, which I'll show you here. So it, we already got a file called exchange.json. So this is what it was trying to do, that main name and classifier RAML tags. So um, we will call this as a root file. This is where we will define uh, all the API spec and everything. So uh, this is uh, the RAML uh, 1.0. So which version it is, it's showing, and this is the title. So we, our motive is to design an API where uh, we'll have the, uh, that flight resource and things like that, flight, get method and everything. That is what we want to design today. Just give me a minute and uh, we'll start for this one. So uh, are you clear about that uh, flight method which we are going to design? Like what is the end product in the mind? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. So as I said that it's a resource, so we will start with a slash and we will give the flights. So this defines our first resource. So you will see that we will be getting an error uh, if you are doing any mistakes. So it's it's uh, like it gets a chance to just review your code and why it is showing a error here. So I haven't given a colon here. That's why it is uh, giving a red mark. So as soon as I give a colon, uh, so we I'm able to see the flights endpoint here. But as we haven't uh, defined any get method or anything. That is why it is not showing any endpoints yet. It is just showing the flight resource. So next will be to add get method. So I just press and enter and I was already there in this at this indentation. I did not have to come to this indentation. Uh, it, it gives you options that yeah, you have defined a resource. So automatically you will be coming to this indentation. So I'll just write a get. So I was telling you that there will be an API shelf which will help us to give suggestions, right? So you have to pull this arrow out. So sometimes it's not visible. So you have to just click this arrow and you will get what is there for you. So my arrow cursor is right now in flight resources. So we don't have any suggestions here. That's why we are not able to see anything. As soon as you press and enter, you will get all the suggestions that what are the possibilities which you can use here. So we will just look on the possibilities what that what uh, what things we can uh, use after the resource. So the first things comes into the mind is the methods. So this is all the methods which we can use: delete, get, head, options, patch, all the HTTP methods. Then uh, this is docs like just uh, uh, to write your name that this resource, what it will do, what is the description, just to make our code more readable. So we can provide a description here. Then this is types and trees. This will come in later part at what it's a data type or what kind of it is. And then is a security. So many projects are using security at their API spec also, but it depends on project to project that um do you want to do a secure property here or not so that is a, like more a kind of advanced thing which we can uh, see in this um, session or uh, sometime when we get some other free time so we'll start with our get resources so as soon as i click the get resource again it came to this point and it is uh, showing the different thing what we can add like uh, a body again the description that headers and all these things. So what we will do is we will come back a space uh, back and we will add another resource called post. 
So the number of spaces on the indentation is mm -hmm. it uh, determined by the uh, UI, this, uh, UI itself, or uh, or do we have to have some specific? Uh, suppose some people when I press the tab, it by default it moves five character space, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And some people they may have set up a their system with eight characters, something like that. Okay. So is it the way it works here, or uh, can we change the indentation number of characters to be more? Or... So I think it's a, it it can work uh, in the UI like uh, as you press and enter, so it will automatically come uh, onto an indentation level, oh, okay. and you don't have to worry about indentation if you uh, see. Here you're getting the options and you know that uh, after the uh, resource, I want to do a get get method. Mm -hmm. So if I remove these things and again, I, if I come back here and if I don't get here, if I come to this indentation, I won't find that get method. Oh, okay, okay. You cannot see that, right? So it has to be a parent child. So this is a parent. So indentation should be inside it. That's how we will get to know. So this is also a way that you are on the right path or not. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Otherwise, that uh, suggestions will not be even. Suggestions will not come. And you'll be uh, thinking like that something is wrong and then you have to check the indentation. So this, uh, uh, actually this API spec RAML, we don't cover it in the uh, like starting sessions because uh, some people will just uh, get scared of it and uh, will not continue doing MuleSoft. So what how how we designed it is uh, like after five or six sessions we oh. used to give this uh, uh, lecture, but mm -hmm. as you said you were interested in this one uh, at how we are doing an API spec RAML that's why we thought yeah it's good idea to start with this because oh. if you know the flow then it will be a lot more easier to understand MuleSoft because if you go to the training uh, uh, which is provided by MuleSoft for MCD. It is kind of similar to this structure only. They're also sh showing the same uh, flight example. I've taken it from there only, from the official training website. Uh, most of the things are from uh, the training website, um, but I am adding things which are not covered in that, like which are already implementing the project. So I'm adding that part and then covering it. So if you do it from there, then it will be very confusing because they will not tell you how the flow is going to happen. Yeah, okay. I, I actually I went through it uh, long back. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand what exactly. Exactly, the training is uh, like designed in a very like very beautiful way and un understandable, but the connectivity is not proper. That's what I uh, thought of. There are many See, students who have a, mm -hmm. they make everything easier. Right. right so. No institute will start this right. So. Exactly. Exactly. Each after under they have their own catch point internally. Right. So even I have uh, attended the trainer session also uh, for uh, Microsoft FCD. I have uh, got a chance to attend, and uh, they're also like they will not. They will just show you the uh, bits and pieces that this is API spec RAML, this is implementation. But how it is actually getting connected, you will have to figure it out on your own. They will not show you that starting that how it is getting connected. Okay, anyways, uh, we'll move to other things. Uh, so we have created, as you can see, the flight resources is completed and we have get and post method, right? So we, as you remember that we had one more resource uh, called uh, ID, where we have to just check with the ID. So we will add that ID also. So it was an URI parameter. That is why I am giving a curly brace. So whenever we have an, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, URI parameter, then you have to provide a curly braces. This is important part. And now you can see there is an uh, error in our console. So why it is happening? It's happening because of the indentation. So I have to just get a space back and this will go. So this should come under the get line or the flights. Uh, this is a fl flight resource and this is under the ID line. So once I get this, then I will again uh, get the get resource here this looks like uh, this is not looking like a child resource right of that flight because here it is coming under the flight so the child resource uh, it's not a child resource it's a nested resource 
child is this methods okay so okay. this is a nested resource so what but will happen is still comes under flights right yeah it still comes under flight so if you go to a new uh, browser and if you want to get this one so you will be querying it like this flights then slash then your id which you are passing yeah so this is how it will work so that is why we haven't given uh, any like uh, flights and then id that's how it will work in the long picture so now we have got uh, two api endpoint which is get post and get now uh, we will add query parameters so uh, i think if you remember from the first session that we were doing uh, when we were querying the flight uh, api we had a chance to set the destination also right we we could set the destination and we could get a, a flights which were belonging to the, that destination so for that it was having query parameter so that is why we want to add a query parameter to the get resource so whenever we are doing a get resource we want to specify a query parameter so again we don't have to write anything it's coming up here we just have to click it so as soon as we click the query parameters it is up here now you have to define the name of the query parameter that what will be the name of my query parameter it can be anything uh, in our case we are using as destination okay. we also pass the date right sorry the date yeah the date of the travel uh, the date of the travel uh, that was in uh, make my trip if i remember right oh okay this is the api which we are trying to develop which uh, okay. yeah yeah american flight so it didn't have that capability yes we can add the capability of uh, giving the dates but it will become a more complex code so we will go with that uh, query parameters for uh, the destination so whenever uh, you give a query parameter or anything of that sort you have to provide that it's required or or it's not required it's a kind of prime a primary key suppose uh, if you don't give the primary key and uh, it will not work right it's like that only <clears throat> so you have to specify a required again when you come here you will already <clears throat> getting a parameter option and parameter you can define yes what is the maximum length uh, it should have you can just filter out things like here right uh, what is the minimum length uh, what is the required so i i can give you a use case here and that a uh, few days back i was designing an api spec which required a phone number to be passed in query parameters okay phone number of any user so we used a, a parameter called max length and min length so to restrict the phone number from uh, like a 10 uh, number of uh, 10 digit is the phone number so mm -hmm. to restrict that we use the max length so the user is not um, providing a nine number or 11 number phone digit and it's it just a small addition to the the addition of a phone uh, phone number check can save you many dollars right how it can save that if you do a check here only at the time of uh, at the starting time only then it will not go to all the other api calls and, and this is this is not possible in uh, oic you know when we use rest api and so services in oic mm -hmm. that also has the template parameter and the query parameter but you don't have uh, okay this is the limitation to the limitation mm -hmm. maximum length you know, there is yeah you can perform more of the task also uh, i'm just showing the default values i think we can use more things also and can define at your own but this suffices uh, maximum uh, use cases which we have so for destination i just want that it should not be a mandatory field suppose uh, you don't uh, like on that day we were doing so it was not a mandatory field if you remember yeah, right yeah. so i'll show you that also just a second i'll just remove that part let me remove this so yeah it's a best but better idea to do it here okay so as i was showing you this is the resource manager for a folder where we store all the things and here we have the api endpoints 
but what I didn't show you in the PowerPoint slides is we have a thing called uh, let me see now, the mocking service here. Okay, so whenever if you want to do the mocking service, you can do it in the starting only. You don't have to wait for the project to complete and then you'll mock it and get uh, the ID and sample data. You can do at any point of time when it is ready. So we'll just use the get resource now and see what we are getting. Okay, so you just have to type, uh, click the get and go to try it. So this is the mocking service URL, which is already defined by MuleSoft. So we'll just use a try it. And you can see the request URL is there. Query parameters is not coming. It's uh, just an optional thing now. And we will do a send. So as soon as we do a send, what we get is 200 uh, HTTP status code and we get a blank array. So it's obvious that we haven't defined anything. So by default, uh, it gives you a 200 OK status and a blank array. So next um, objective will be to add on the flight details that whenever we're doing a get resource, we should be getting all the flights here, right? Okay, and the payload will be visible. Yes, exactly. And that will be an example payload. It won't be a real time data of the flights. So moving to the console, we were adding the query parameters here. So let's add the query parameters and the name as destination. And uh, so by default, if you don't provide uh, anything here, so it will take as a mandatory field that it, uh, it, it will be a mandatory field, but we don't want query parameters to be a mandatory field. We want users to get all the flights and they, we want them to filter also. So that is why we are um, like doing it forcefully. We are making it a man, uh, non mandatory field by uh, keyword called required and we are passing it as false. So most of the things which you do in a get parameter are mandatory fields actually. If there are 10 uh, fields, so nine out of 10, nine will be mandatory and only Q1 or two will be non mandatory. So that's how we will pass false. And if you want, you can use the required and true also. So it's a good best practice uh, to write, like some people will not use the required, okay? They will just uh, think that default. yeah, it's default, but it's a good practice to use the default, if it, even if it's a true also. So we got the required as false. Then as we come here, we have to show them that what are the uh, destination they can choose from. It's a pick list kind of destination. They are not, uh, they will not be able to give the destination exactly. So that's why we will use this enum parameter. And then we will give the different, uh, you can say, um, the code of the destination. So again, I didn't give a space, so it was again showing an error. So that's how you will see this this reminds me the cobalt cobalt programming okay okay <laughs> so i used to do cobalt programming long cobalt. okay so this was like similar to that right i've heard yeah, where, of you'll have numbers, numbers. Mm -hmm. where you'll have line numbers but okay. even if you make a small dot it will throw out the whole code as a compilation error oh, it'll okay. give you a thousand lines of uh, error messages and then you'll not be able to figure out where exactly it got. Yeah, the, that is the challenging part. You know? Yeah. So it right now it's not uh, like present in the market much. Now Cobol or it's still uh, people Cobol, are using. Uh, people are still using in the mainframe side, but uh, there is no new projects or anything. Right. Right. So uh, we have added the query parameters, right? So again, we'll go back to the console and check what is the difference we are getting in our flight resource. So let's go back to the get resource part. And now if you see, uh, we get a query parameter as destination. Okay, so the things will be visible here also. Okay, so again, we'll do a uh, try it. And now just let me just expand it a bit more. So it is uh, giving us an uh, query parameter SFO, LAX, CLE. 
so right now it's false so i will not provide anything and i'll just send again try sending again and i will see that yeah again it's returning a flyer uh, empty array for me and even if i do a sfo or anything it will again uh, respond in empty array because we haven't defined anything in response section yet so by default it's giving a blank array and just to prove that point that if you give it true so i'll provide it as a true and let's see what is the difference we get let's go back to summary ones get resource so now if you see string required and then we will try it again and you have to pass it there's no other way like you can't choose a blank thing you have to pass it and then you can do it so that is how it is working behind the scenes so here we uh, define all the input parameters right so for lags and clear yeah. that all the thing is there any way suppose i i am maintaining all these uh, parameters in kind of lookup Mm -hmm. Look up table kind of thing. So, see for example, if you are uh, running a program where you have to choose a parameter, so the parameter will be showing as a list of values. The list mm -hmm. of values basically coming from the database table or right. lookup definition. Is it possible to get some kind of uh, lookup values from the database table or something? Mm, I'm. I i don't think so it's possible um, but uh, i'm very not very sure on that but it will make it very very complex uh, this is just a place where you just define the basic things okay if we are not trying to actually implement the code so just have to define basic things and then when you are implementing it at that time i understood oh. your question right that uh, you want to do a lookup on a table so again it comes as an implementation part so you don't have to okay. do that implementation here okay okay so this is just a design exactly exactly it's very confusing i can understand that people will come back and forth in uh, implementation and design so this is a place where we are just designing so even if you have a lookup table uh, you should uh, know a few values and just provide it here and then oh, we are, okay. when we are doing a real implementation then you can do it so i can give you a real uh, life uh, real project based example uh, where we were doing a lookup from oracle tables okay so we had a bi call for that so we had a us country uh, sorry us state and we wanted to fetch the county of it so what we were okay, doing okay. is we were just sending the uh, state name uh, to the oracle table and we were getting back the county so okay and that uh, counties will be displayed as a list of values uh no no it won't be displayed as list of values uh, so like in in our implementation so this thing whatever uh, looks uh, like you are seeing here mm -hmm. will be at user part so it will be kind of a web page uh, if i can give you an example of web page so they have to input the values okay oh okay but it it was not part of this api no it wasn't a part of so uh, i'm talking about a project where uh, a person has to just submit the order uh, like it's a reimbursement kind of uh, website where he had purchased something so he will just give the state name and he will populate the county that yeah this is uh, this county and he will upload the bill but when we are doing it on a back end we will be checking that county is correct or not we will not just see the input and provide the county in right because people sometimes can provide a wrong input so oh, even if we have the input we will just make a bi call and check what is the county of the state and if we get a different county from the state then we will reject that bill that yeah this is not the right county and so on so where, like that. where that call will be made uh, on that web page is it through the mule code or that will be no, done no. as there there will be no code made on the web page in the web page you just have to um, insert your data okay when inside it's like uh, suppose um, i'll show you one example so there's a site called um, which any point platform so this is a website any point platform 
yeah so this is a web page right so uh, let's go to sign up so here you you have to provide all the things like full name email yeah. phone number company everything right so yeah. user will provide the full name and this is again an api what mm. would it do is and you provide your email id also right yeah. so this will take everything and then in the back end in the implementation this all details of six seven lines uh, mm. we will take it and do a email call so gmail call so this forwards your link right then only you will be able to sign up yeah yeah so yeah. take your email id and then uh, call that uh, http uh, gmail thing and then it will send you a code so that was happening in implementation not in the web page so we are not doing anything like i understood your question that you were thinking that uh, if you do a look up so it should come here right like yeah, salesforce exactly exactly yeah but it doesn't work like that it's just an api so it doesn't have that capability yet oh, okay so if you want to suppose in our uh, use case if you want to display all the uh, state or all the counties under uh, mm -hmm. different states in us mm -hmm. so you will just get the detail like i may randomly enter something on that yeah, yeah. right yeah then you take that and then you validate against the database exactly and then throw exactly. an error back here right exactly. the value yes. Yes. so i'll just remind you that it's an integration tool right uh, we are understanding and learning about integration tool so if it was salesforce we had that capability that we will get the lookup things and we'll get all the values but yeah. uh, it will not uh, this uh, emil soft will not have that capabilities to show up the, all the values it's just connecting external systems uh, and integrating it so that yeah. is why and as we have come to this page uh, the emil soft anypoint.milsoft.com so whenever you have time uh, we can create an uh, uh, account here so you will be able to do the hands on on free or this is for free uh, so there's a catch that it is available only for 30 days so after 30 oh. days uh, whatever you have developed will be just vanish and it will go away so it's valid for 30 days and after 30 days you can uh, get this account again but you have to use a different email id okay okay sure but all the projects whatever we have deployed everything will be gone yeah that will be gone there is a way to uh, keep it uh, in a different way but so you uh, can download it in uh, as a jar file somewhere and then you yes. can uh, re-upload it okay you can do that yes so i'll paste this in our chat so you can uh, sign up and if you have any query like uh, we can address in the next session so this is important to just sign up to this website okay, okay. then only it will be able to do the hands-on and the next thing which i want to show is uh, just download the any point platform id also so it's not required in the next session as of now but uh, you can it's good to just download it and keep it so it is again free it's not chargeable for uh, normal edition so just have to download the any point uh, just a second just type any points uh, yeah any uh, desktop tool right yeah and download any point studio so download 30 day free trial again so you just have to select the operating system windows and you have to give the first name last name and just download it so if you have already uh, the first thing will you should do is should uh, sign up for this any point mm -hmm. platform uh, page then you will not have to provide all these things because you will already be logged into any point uh, platform and you just have to give oh. windows and you can just download it so once you download it it will be a jar file uh, sorry the jar file of 2gb and then we can work out that you need to do any other this things is, uh, this one has i mean this doesn't have the 30 day limit right uh, the development studio again it comes to the 30 day 30 day free trial or oh, the tool also yeah yeah but I think you can use it. I'm not having any issues using it, but I don't know why they say 30 day trial, trial free period. <laughs> I think it's because um, the AnyPoints uh, platform is integrated with the studio. Maybe that's why they're saying. Okay. Okay. So if I uh, show it here, AnyPoint Studio, I will not have to provide all the details because I have already uh, 
already signed up in the Cinepoint platform, so I can just directly download it here, I believe. So see, I'm not getting any sign up because I've already logged in, that's right. So any Windows, Mac, and just agree and just download it and show once. So it's easy to download now. Yeah, I can download. Yeah, okay. So uh, we have completed till here and you can see all the like um, uh, the mocking services and everything. So I'll cover a few more topics. Uh, so you want to continue now or like uh, we can um, do it in we another can, session? Continue now. We can, we can just put some logical stuff. Okay, so what I will do is I can just show you um, how it is uh, working in a, uh, like mocking service how it is working right now we saw just the get part it right so we will sh see how the mocking service is actually working so this is the mocking service and uh, you can till now we could uh, see to ourselves only but if you want to give it to the business and uh, show it to them that how it will look like you can just make this slider as make public slider and then you will have a public link so this is accessible oh. by anyone and you can just set an expiration date also. So you can set a future expiration date. Uh, let it be 11th. And then we will copy it. So once we'll you copy it, this link to them, right? Yes, yes. We can provide. Normally, we don't do it in, a, in this way, actually, because they already have, the business will already have uh, access to our um, uh, design center and everything, right? So we publish to exchange uh, with this button and then they look at there but just uh, for different developers if they want to see that if it's coming right then it this uh, this comes in handy so you can use any uh, rest client and you can just come to an event or remove this and just add this so if you see this url uh, we don't see a flights url right flights yeah, um, yeah. dresses so the, we have to just provide that method uh, I mean, the resource. So once you give the flight and it is get method, and we will send it. So request validation error. Okay, so see, we it is showing. Ah, right. uh, sorry. Business. No, we haven't specified any uh, listener port or anything, right? Is it yeah. because of that or? No, no. So that listener port uh, is not. Uh, it comes into picture only when we are doing an implementation in studio. So okay. if you remember here, then it should listen to it, right? But this is the whole uh, logic um, of any point, uh, sorry, any point platform that we don't have to set up anything. That is how we are saving time. Okay. So we are getting a public link. And if you see, it throws an error here. That request validation error requires parameter destination is missing. Why it is happening? Because we have made this as true, required true. Oh, okay. That is why we are getting a, a parameter destination is required. If you made it false, and then again, I'll go back to mocking service, just to take a different URL, that URL will work, but still uh, to be on a safe side, we'll just take another URL and pop it. I think the same URL and then just Let's see the same error. We just have done the changes. Mm, invalid media type. Okay. So I think we have to provide the media type also here. Then only we'll be able to see. So you can see that uh, now the error of destination has gone because we made it as a false here. So that error has gone, but still we are getting one error. Um, that is that error trying to find response for invalid media type. So whenever we are doing a get request from any uh, client like Postman or ARC, we have to provide a, uh, what you see, uh, there's a thing called headers. You have to add this header and there's a accept content type. So what kind of headers we want to get in response so it should be an application json thing in this way it should work yeah so just by adding the accept response in an application json the format we are getting what we had before right that it should be okay, yeah, a yeah. blank area 
okay so this is uh, um, i've shown you how the it works in uh, api uh, specifications so the next thing which uh, we have to add is uh, it's a bit complex so if we start today i don't think we'll be able to cover that one we can continue tomorrow okay okay so let me see if we have any slides which we can cover today so this is again the development life cycle so this one we completed using api designer to define a raml so we defined the resources and nested resources we defined get and post methods we specified the query parameters so i think this also we completed that testing api design without code so this is what we did now that uh, we mocked uh, our api and we saw this two methods and we use the try button to get it and again we use the mocking service and then we got it in api console so uh, then comes the again the second walk through i think this also we covered uh, right now that simulating an api so this is also covered it's the same thing which i saw that we can generate a shareable link which does not require any authentication and share with the outside stakeholders so this is also done so this have this is uh, as i said that to get an early feedback we use mocking service to test the api before even before it is implemented okay so this is all the same thing the next is defining method response details with rammers this is what i was talking about with right now we are getting a blank response but we want our response uh, of all the flight details so in the next class uh, we will be uh, implementing this response that how we will get the flight response okay so any questions uh, apart from this you have till now yeah so far uh, you know i, I i'm kind of uh, understood mm -hmm. how this works because um earlier i had a doubt how the whole software piece works right yeah yeah and um, this works in a different little bit different way correct correct yeah so even uh, when i started the training i i, I couldn't be able to uh, connect all the dots i was just doing the hands on and training and everything but i couldn't connect the dots that how exactly it is working it's even after coming to the project i got to know that how exactly things are connected and how it is happening so it's good that you have uh, understood in the like three to one like it's a third session and you understood that so yeah it's very good for that okay we will so, explore more on this yeah yeah definitely okay gram so yeah. uh, we'll speak to prasad and then uh, we can see that if we can continue from tomorrow or uh, uh, it is feasible to do it on the weekend okay sure 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 okay yeah. thank you thank you Have a so nice you, day. You, um, he will be sending email or i think uh, if he is okay he can whatsapp me Mm -hmm. or uh, if you can send me email also i think you have my email right or you don't yeah yeah i can get it from him so i'll speak him uh, speak to him i think right now he's in uh, some classrooms already uh, he'll, he'll be free in some time then i can speak to him and he can up update you directly sure 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 okay yeah. okay thank, thank you so much thank have you nice. yeah. yeah you too bye bye